When you're satisfied with the notes that you've recorded using a combination of a MIDI track and your virtual instrument, it's a great idea to print the audio that's coming out of the virtual instrument to a stereo or a mono track. You'll be able to free up processing power to Pro Tools and be able to manipulate the audio just as you would any other recorded track. Um, and at the same time, you can still retain the notes and later re-enable the virtual instrument in order to change the notes or do something different. So what we've got here is our session that has structure as our virtual instrument. And it's got two patches, all synth leads, which is a low F sharp, and hybrid dry and warm, which are very wet chords. So what we're going to do is we're going to capture the chords and the low F sharp uh, using a bus method that will bus the audio out of structure into mono or stereo tracks. Let's take a listen. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is be very mindful of where the sounds occur and how long they actually are. For instance, the chords track appears to be from roughly bar 5 to bar 13. That is, there are no notes after bar 13 that we can see. But if we solo this track and take a close listen, you'll notice that the sound actually continues past bar 13. Now the reason we want to be aware of that is when we're printing our audio to track, we need to make sure we record all of the audio that's actually being played. So don't let your eyes fool you. You only see notes that go up to measure 13, but the notes actually sound past 13. So you need to set a pretty big um, recording area. So we'll, we'll be very cautious and we will, if anything, over record. Then later we can trim regions in order to maximize um, disc reading in Pro Tools. So let's create a new stereo track to capture our audio with. And we'll call the track Chords Print. And this is the track to where we are going to actually record the chords that are coming out. In the mix window, we need to set the output of the virtual instrument to a bus. Now a bus is like a virtual cable that connects two tracks, or more tracks actually. So it's connecting the output of one track to the input of another. We used buses when we were talking about um, doing different sort of effects sends in earlier movies. I'll use bus 1 and 2, and I'll rename it print. Now on the input track for chords print, I'll choose the bus print. When I'm playing back my session, I only want to hear the notes for the chords, so I solo the chords track. My structure track is solo saved, so that way when I solo the chords track, it'll always play. And remember that soloing will only play back the specified track, so if I don't also solo the chords print track, I won't hear the notes as they record. So we hit play. And we don't hear them because now the track is going to default to whatever the input monitoring is. Um, so I've got it input monitoring um, to do input only, but you can also set it to auto input. And then when you play, well, it's not going to play it back. I thought it would, but if we record enable it, we should be able to hear it um, when we start recording. So be mindful of that. There we go, finally. So the last thing we want to do is set a region to record. Uh, you could just always do this on the fly by hitting record when you want to start recording and then stop it. I like to be a little tighter with it in that I'll use the transport to set a start. So here bar 4 and an end, I'll say bar 15. So I'm going to go two bars past the notes to capture any reverb tails or delay tails. And I, I think there's some. Now that that's set and the track is record enabled, I'll hit record and play.
All right, and as you can see in the region, it is verified that there is some audio that occurs after the notes, so it's a good idea that we did actually record to bar 15. Let's repeat this whole process for the low F sharp. Now, I'll disengage the record enable because I don't want to record on this track again. I want to record to a new track. So if I select the track and create a new stereo track, it'll appear underneath the selected track. Keep in mind that when you're using Pro Tools LE, you are limited to the number of tracks you can create, and stereo tracks do count twice towards that limit. Uh, so you just want to be very careful as to how many audio tracks you can um, you use during your recording. If it gets to a point where you're running out, you could always print multiple sounds to one track. So I could print the entire structure sound to a track, but then I lose the ability to mix between bass and the chords. But anyhow, um, we're not going to come close to the limit right now. So I have a track called Bass Print. I'll go back to the mix window, keep the structure output to be print, but instead of soloing the chords track, I'll solo the bass track. And I'm going to disengage the input for the chords print track just as a safety uh, precaution. And then I'll engage the input for the bass print track to be bus print record enable the track. Um, let's go back to the beginning. Okay, we're getting something. Ah, we haven't soloed the bass print track. There we go. There's no reverb on this track. It ends right at um, bar 12. To be safe, I am going to record to 13, and I'll just trim it back later. Here we go. Okay, now I'll take off the record enable. It sounded like there was a little bit of a shuffle too. I don't know if that's caused by the CPU having to run the screen capture and Pro Tools, but uh, we'll take a listen. As long as it's rhythmically tight with the um, drums, for our purposes, it'll be fine. Now let's mute the notes and the structure free track and take a listen. So now the bass is actually playing back the audio capture. Okay, sounds fine. What I like to do after I've printed my audio to tracks uh, from virtual instruments, I don't like to delete the virtual instrument tracks because I like to uh, leave the option open should I ever want to go back and maybe change the composition. Because remember, once these tracks are audio, you can't go in there and fix notes outside of using something like... Um, uh, Antares Auto-Tune or uh, Melodynes, you know, something that is meant to actually go in and fix notes within audio tracks. And even then, it's going to be pretty imprecise. So what I do is I, um, I like to make inactive the instrument track. And that way I can free up processing power in Pro Tools, but retain the settings should I ever want to make it active again. So what you can do is you can right click the structure plugin and choose make inactive. What that does is that will italicize the outputs on the MIDI tracks. And if you take a look at the tracks now, they've been grayed out. And that's an indication that they're not going to function. But they still retain their notes. And if you want to re-enable them later, you can right click and choose make active. And Pro Tools will have to go through the process of actually loading up the instrument again. And if you've got something like the Contact Player or um, Contact, which is a big sampler, that can take a while to load again. So, you know, if, if you've got a virtual instrument or virtual instruments that take a while to load, just be mindful that when you're making them inactive, you are freeing up processing, but when you make them active again, you'll have to wait a little bit for all of the sounds to load.